Okay, since we are a couple minutes behind it, I want to make sure we have time to get to uh, question and answers at the end of this. Uh, we are going to come back and start with a uh, presentation from Carla Schroer and Mark Mudge, co-founders of the nonprofit cultural heritage imaging known as Chi. Chi develops and implements imaging technologies for cultural, historic, artistic heritage, and scientific research. They've also been great friends and collaborators with MoMA, so I'm excited to turn it over to them for their presentation, bringing scientific imaging, imaging to a broad base of cultural communities. Hi, thanks for all of you coming to listen to this interesting process today. And uh, I'd also like to thank Juan Addison for setting us up so beautifully. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to begin and then uh, Carla will take it away uh, after we set the stage. At Chi, we are committed to the idea and what brings us into work every day that the treasures of humanity are worth saving. And Chi's vision is one where simple to use easy to learn uh, documentary technologies are wildly available to cultural heritage practitioners, cultural communities, including indigenous communities, and citizen scholars around the world. And what we're truly committed to is preparing the ground for cultural communities to take control of the documentation of their heritage, but more importantly, to take control of their own cultural narrative so that others from other places in the world and frequently ex-colonial powers aren't providing the narrative for these communities. We also want the information that's built by citizen scholars, cultural communities, and heritage professionals to be reliable and accessible to people around the world when the cultural communities give permission for sharing. We also want to lay the groundwork such that conservation and preservation for both the original material a uh, piece of material culture is enhanced, but also the documentary digitization of that material is also preservable and enhanceable uh, going forward because Lon accurately pointed out that the digital dark age has consumed a great amount of early cultural heritage documentation and we'll never get it back. So the important point is that if we set the foundation appropriately, digitizations or, or investments in digitization with scarce cultural heritage dollars are going to pay dividends in reuse of this information going forward. One of the most important concepts in this context is the democratization of technology. And one of the most com important components of this is allowing the work of cultural and commu uh, cultural communities and citizen scholars to be accepted by the world community. And what we need there is to be able to first simply capture the scientific metadata that um, describes the context of gathering digital information and then the processing of that digital information into digital representations. But we need to be able to separate the authority and empirical reliability of these digital representations from the institutional authority. We want to separate the authenticity of the digital representation from the institutional authority of the group, usually a first world group, 
uh, frequently former colonial operators um, from only authoritative sources being able to contribute to the cultural dialogue. And so what we want is for anyone who learns a good um, photogrammetric computational photography workflow to be able to contribute their work to the world's knowledge base and have others qualitatively evaluate that work um, so they can understand whether it's appropriate to reuse or repurpose. So democratization requires a set of technologies where the equipment to capture the stuff in the real world is um, accessible, meaning it's relatively low cost and the learning curves involved in understanding how to do these processes are manageable and short term. And that's because for us to do any good in, in trying to mitigate the disaster of cultural heritage loss, particularly with the increase of the destruction of climate change, we need these procedures to be adopted wild, widely throughout the world. And so if we can get cultural communities and citizen caretakers all over the world involved in this documentary process, we're going to enrich humanity's knowledge base and it, this activity will also subvert the ongoing process of digital colonialism by well-financed uh, first world um, societies. When uh, she went to Nigeria, uh, sponsored by the US State Department, and I went with um, Eric Landsberg, formerly director of media at MoMA, and one of Robert's um, uh, early mentors, um, the Nigerians, were absolutely determined that taking control of their own cultural narrative was central to the work of their monuments and museum operation. And the audience here is completely full of Nigerians from their national museums. And so here's an example. We were at a national museum in the city of Ibadan, Nigeria, north of Lagos. And I was given a tour of this beautiful museum that has all sorts of stuff that I, as an outsider, would have selected to digitize. But during our three-day um, seminar there, I said, go out and find an object that is most important to you and we'll digitize it. So the local museum community came back with an object that I would never have selected in a hundred years to digitize. Um, and it was this percussive instrument here, it's clay and it's got an opening at the top and an opening in the middle, which was used in song and dance in the local community, which is incredibly important to Nigerians. Um, another project that we've been involved with is bringing the skills of computational photography to the Clinket community in Southeast Alaska. And the last thing we did before COVID shut us down was go to the British Museum on behalf of the Maori community in New Zealand and digitize um, a sail that had been collected in the early uh, 1800s, which is the only uh, example of this type of canoe sail that exists. And a community of weavers in the Maori uh, group wanted to recapture the weaving technology that enabled these sails to be um, resistant to weathering, 
and highly efficient when you're pirate piloting a canoe. So we used photogrammetry um, using a, a nine position redundancy process to create a 3.6 billion point point cloud of the sail. And here's an example of an ortho mosaic of the 3D digital representation that we created. And the model is too big to efficiently be used uh, on the web right now. So we use digital elevation maps and ortho mosaics to make it um, usable. And now I'm gonna transfer the con over to Carl. Thanks, Mark. Um, so really what we wanna say here is the big idea is that we know how to use off the shelf digital cameras and low cost uh, software to create all kinds of digital representations that can be very high quality, very high precision if you do them correctly. And I think that, that if you do them correctly is, is part of the goal of the digital lab notebook, which I'm gonna talk about in just a moment. So our work at Cultural Heritage Imaging is all in the field of computational photography. And what we mean by that is that instead of taking an individual photograph, we're taking sequences of photos and we're using computer algorithms to extract information across that sequence of photos so that we get a new kind of digital representation that's not possible from a single image by itself. And there are many, many examples of this. Our organization primarily works with reflectance transformation imaging or RTI. I'm gonna show you an example in a moment. Um, photogrammetry for 3D and some spectral imaging. So uh, a quick example here of a, of a 3D model. This is from the Smithsonian. And uh, just to show you, this was part of a training class. It's part of their anthropology collection. So the blue rectangles are the photos. And basically we have, you know, a nice model of this, uh, of this piece, the top, top and bottom that we can zoom in. And this is all high precision measurable data. Um, I'll show you very quickly an RTI. And the idea of an RTI here is that, so, so for 3D, we're taking a lot of photos around the subject and then we have a full 3D model that we can manipulate and rotate. For RTI, we have a single camera point of view, but from that single camera point of view, we have shape and color and we can look at really fine surface details and we can relight uh, however we want to, to really bring out those, those details. So we also can mathematically enhance the surface. So in this case, case, um, by taking the color out and making the surface kind of shiny, we can see every little crack. We can see the little bubbles that were probably part of the original manufacturer. We can see some of the corrosion that's happening on this surface. Just another quick uh, RTI example. This is also from the Smithsonian. Um, and then here's an image from the RTI. And then here's an image from that enhanced mode. And we can see every every little chip, every little touch and retouch on the surface. We have an ongoing project in Albania right now where, where we're working with the, the Albanian American Development Foundation and also the Ministry of Culture of Albania and helping them set up a, a center, a national center for digitization. And we'll be, we'll be doing photography, but also RTI and photogrammetry and teaching uh, the, local members of the museum community over time how to apply uh, all these technologies. So uh, this was part of the pilot project. We shot this beautiful um, icon and uh, here's just a, a quick version on, on Sketchfab. So this, we actually shot this in both uh, photogrammetry and RTI. We can see the surface and Lots of, lots of cool uh, detail. And then here, this is from the RTI, just images directly out of the RTI. You can see the level of surface information that we have. So we can really understand both how it was made, its current state from a conservation perspective. And often we can also see evidence of prior conservation activity when we look at these really fine surface details. So back to this idea of democratization of technology, that, that's really what drives our organization. And 
one of the central ideas there is that local communities need to be in control of what gets digitized, what gets shared. There are reasons they may want to keep things just within their community and there are things that they want to share. And that the more we involve local communities and empower local communities, the more that all of us are enriched and they are empowered to be part of the narrative and, and the story that's being told. So how do we do this? So the first big idea Mark gave you, here's the second big idea, which is that we know how to collect and manage and create a digital lab notebook that records everything that we're doing, who, what, when, where, how, and why, uh, and of the full context so that when people are doing this kind of digitization, they can have appropriate records that other people can inspect and understand what they're looking at. So this is open source software that we're working on right now. There's an early beta available from our website. Uh, in this short presentation, I can't give a demo, but there are videos on our website that that talk more about it and how, uh, how you can use it. We have a grant right now from the National Endowment for the Humanities and we'll be releasing an updated uh, beta in the next month or two. And then by June, we'll have the 1.0 release out. Um, the big idea is it's open source. It's, we tried to make it easy to use. I think a critical thing is that you can reuse data. So there's a database on the back end. You enter information about your equipment, your people, your stakeholders, your projects, whatever. Um, and then you can kind of group that together and make templates and reuse that data really easily. It's also super flexible. So you can put a huge amount of information in, you can put a small amount of information in. That's up to you and your institution. Um, we're producing linked data that's mapped to the CIDOC conceptual reference model, which is a semantic ontology. And what's really cool is you don't need to understand anything that I just said. It just does this for you. It works uh, under the hood. And we think that's critical for people to adopt the current, uh, the current kinds of uh, technologies and semantic knowledge that, that's happening out there. The other thing is that the tool, not in the early beta, but the, the next version that's coming out, we have a, our, an archiver tool that allows uh, the user to automatically wrap up their original images, this metadata, uh, work products that go with it, processing information, all of that, and put that in either a METS or a Bagot format, making it much easier for people to submit their information to repositories. So the idea here is we're collecting and managing information about the digital representation through its whole life cycle, and then preparing that data to make it easy to submit and manage and, and um, put in repositories. So the kind of information that we're collecting is all kinds of things from, you know, equipment, who was involved, we can associate documents with the information, um, who paid for it, we have, have rights information, what's the subject, I mean, our focus is on the information about the digital representations, but we need to link that to what actually is this a, a representation of. So, and the idea with linked data is then, as there's other linked data out there, you can go find other references to that particular site or subject uh, on the web. Um, right now, we support reflectance transformation imaging, photogrammetry, multispectral imaging, and documentary image sets. It's a very photo image set oriented um, system. A uh, couple of quick acknowledgements about the folks that, that have been involved. And we're a uh, primary partner here is the Center for Cultural Informatics in uh, Heraklion Crete. We've had uh, funding from a variety of sources over the years as we've been exploring these ideas and now from the National Endowment for the Humanities to really, to really build it out. Um, and I just wanna end here by noting that there is a lot of information on our website. So there, the RTI software is free and open source. You can download it from our website and there are instructional videos and user guides and all kinds of cool stuff. And similarly with photogrammetry, we right now are using commercial software, but there are um, instructional videos to help you with that. The Digital Lab Notebook software is open source and there are instructional videos and guides and things that go along with that. So we really encourage you to take a look if you're interested in pursuing uh, any of these technologies. And I'm gonna end it there. Thank you. <laughs>